some areas, some people, to some things that some businesses can afford, and some some things that people must do out of their own conscience, and it should not be imposed on everybody. I think it's going to, in some instances, we think it will have a negative effect on the ability for people to be flexible in managing their staff. We think it's been too prescribed in some areas, and there are some aspects where they you're making them. Um, the labor code into a, into a criminal offenses and some of the fines we think are exorbitant. So these are some of the things that continue to, to concern us. Now, now we, didn't we didn't come here to discuss the labor code in, in detail, so I mean, let's leave that for another show. Uh, as I said before, you will be back <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> at another time. Also the VAT. Uh, my personal view on VAT, and it might be a simplistic view, is that it's just inflationary in nature. So for example, this pen, if, it, if the worth of this pen is one dollar you'll ask me to pay a dollar and ten cents just to ensure that government collects its tax so now you know arbitrarily that the value of this pen has gone up to 110 or oh, i'm paying 110 for it you the, know the, the mean, value has gone up the cost well it's still, it, yeah the cost has gone up but the value is still a dollar yeah, yeah. Well, right? but I, I think uh, this is this is not exactly how um traditional standard vat works mm -hmm. generally when, when when governments introduce vat they actually um, try to make it um, somewhat um, revenue neutral, somewhat. In fact, which is which in fact, it's a. I suppose this is a, is a nonsense because the only reason they introduce in fact is to make get more revenue. Right. But what generally happens is that governments reduce one or they remove one other tax. So for most times, they remove consumption tax. So if you are paying fifteen percent consumption tax consumption tax will be withdrawn and now you'll pay 15 percent VAT mm -hmm. so it, the, 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 so you, you really are not it's not supposed to be um, terribly inflationary right um, the chamber's position on VAT is that VAT is a VAT like tax is very useful because it broadens the tax base mm -hmm. we think the tax base is too narrow it, it focuses too much on a few persons who are in the formal sector few persons who are also in easy tax handles so that they can easily tax them and and, and so it is it, 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 we have a the government doesn't get sufficient revenue to do what it needs to do mm -hmm. we think broadening the tax base is a good thing and the VAT will do that we have some issues with some of the detail mm -hmm. let's hold on to the details we have a call good evening please go ahead with your contribution hi good evening gentlemen nice nice show this mm -hmm. evening um i have a few questions um can i ask all three or do i ask them in succession uh please ask them i hope ask they're not, all, ask they're not difficult three, questions and then we'll <laughs> have him respond to them <laughs> okay let, yes. let, let me go the first has to do with um the chamber and its relationship with government policy um i want to ask about inflation how does the chamber view inflation in light of government policy um especially um last year or, or rather under under the previous administration we saw an increase in um in wages for the public service which was very high one that was followed by um increase in bus fares two and i think it all stemmed from an increase in fuel prices all right now i believe the policy the fuel pricing policy is 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 what's um critical here how does the chamber view that policy first of all um what exactly about the policy is it something that has caused or is causing inflation because you have a fixed amount of um a fixed percentage or, or, or fixed amount going to government for every is it gallon or or, or liter of um, fuel sold yeah. um and that will in fact force prices up no matter what um what's the chamber's view what was was the chamber ever consulted the cha the cha that policy decision that was taken. Okay, allow me to answer. The please. chamber's position on the fuel pass-through mechanism was that it is important for consumers to appreciate the real price mm -hmm. of, of, of fuel on the, mar on the mar global market, which is what we pay when we import it, so that they can make more efficient decisions. Government subsidizing fuel prices may lead to people consuming more than they, re they would have if they were paying mm -hmm. the normal price. Yes, it does cause inflation as 
fuel, the cost of fuel filters through a number of different activities um, and production. So it does cause inflation. The issue of government taxation, the Chamber believes that we need to pay taxes. Government needs to have revenue so that it can deliver services. It is not, we, we, as far as what level that tax should be, there was never consensus on that. There were some who thought it was a reasonable level. There were some who thought it was too high. But the issue is that government needs to have revenue to deliver services to the public. This is the only way we're going to have good roads, only way we're going to have good education, good health services, and we must be as a people willing to pay our fair share of taxes, but more importantly, we must then demand quality services. Mm -hmm. But we cannot demand quality services when we're not paying taxes. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so ask the other two questions yes, so that yes. I can um, accommodate somebody Number else. Number two, um, in light of the um, Labor Code, you were saying that some provisions could go through, but I know that, the, that, that there was a minimum wage commission that was set up sometime, well, recently. What kind of input did the chamber have on those on, on, on that process, and is that dead in the water? And thirdly, um, to, when you guys began, you spoke about you know youth talent. One thing that I'm very saddened by is the fact that the MNC Fine Arts Award awards um, has been pretty much done away with. And again, I guess it was it was handed over to the CDF, and they have pretty much killed it. Um, can the chamber step in and bring back that kind of um, activity, which was done around Nobel Laureate's Week in times past, and had very great, um, in my opinion, very great um, reviews? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the chamber had, um, a minimum, um, as, a, as an institution, um, not much input into the commission, into the minimum wage debate, but different members and different people from the private sector, the um, Employers Federation, had substantive input into the minimum wage commission and its dialogue and discussions. I am not sure as to the exact status of the minimum wage um, proposal and we would have to check with government to see how it intends to move forward. Did, did the chamber accept um, the, the recommendations of that commission though? Um, the chamber did not make a public acceptance of the, of the commission's recommendations because we had not got full details which we could then share with our members so they could they could it was you know um different sectors are affected differently but i, but I want to say something on the on, 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 on the minimum wage the as, as a chamber we believe that um people must be paid a decent and fair wage mm -hmm. Pe but people must also understand that they must earn a fair wage they must give Mm -hmm. of their time they must be productive and they must give value for money okay um as far as the um, mnc fine arts awards um it, i think a lot of people lament the fact that it has not gone on or has not continued however i think that the cdf has has done some work to change the focus and there is a, a, there is a number of um there are a number of activities that try to tackle the fine arts mm -hmm. and, the, uh, and, and the whole there's, there's there, I think there's a festival coming up, a drama festival and a number of other activities under, uh, which, which seeks to support the arts Right. Mm -hmm. done by CDF. Okay. Now, before the caller came through, you were just talking about some of the, the issues that the Chamber of Commerce had with VAT. So yeah. let's go back to that discussion. Yeah, as I was saying, um, we don't, we, we are, we, we um, believe that um, the, the devil is always in the detail. Mm -hmm. You know, we we are very concerned about how transition, how the transition between that and the existing system will take place. We are very concerned about the extent of the exemption list and the zero-rated item list. Mm -hmm. We're also very concerned that we are moving to an OECS economic union, and that we have that in different countries, and there's. An, and we're not sure how consistent they are and if there's any attempt to bring some consistency because we have a number of firms who are OECS firms operating in different jurisdictions. Um, also with the VAT, we, have, we, we are very concerned about the time frame for the implementation of VAT. Mm -hmm. We would wish that the, the business community has at a minimum six months notice after 
government has disclosed what the policies and the laws are and the regulations are for VAT so that businesses can become VAT ready. A lot of the larger businesses may, have no, very, may not have many challenges, they may be more VAT ready. But we think that small businesses may, may not be VAT ready and the vast majority of businesses on the island are small. So we need to be sure that there is enough time, there is support offered to these small businesses so that they can be VAT ready on a timely basis. Good evening, caller. Thank you for choosing Newsmaker Live. Please go ahead. Good evening, Mr. Reynolds. How are you? Very good. Um, i just like to just raise a point here that made by uh, Mr. Luizy? Luizy, yeah. Sorry. In, there. Um, in referring to, I just think that in referring to, it's better we refer to the interest of the state as opposed to the interest of the government because it always comes out as if um, government is an entity, uh, and it is in some way an entity on its own, and that it works on its own. But the broader picture is that is is the state has to provide and service roads and health care for a person who can't really afford. So instead of looking at, at it as government, if he ch you use the word state, I will it be better it will be better understood by by a layman as myself in the meantime. Point check. I just I, okay. Point check. So, I agree. I'm happy. I want to look at the labor code. And Mr. Luis, you made the point that, um, and you made the point that the, the private sector run things and so forth. And so on. But I wouldn't get into that. If, if, um, I wouldn't get into that now. But not run th runs at, things, runs the economy. Hello, <laughs> runs, runs the economy, not and all these things. Uh, uh, Mr. Luis is a good guy, sportsman, bad guy. But I think that kind of that kind of uh, in that kind of thing was before. Last North and Paris Tiger kind of, kind of thing. So well, let's, ju let's jump forward to the labor code. If you look, if you look at the comparative, um, comparative, or the principal act, as opposed to what was passed in Parliament as the labor code amendment bill to Parliament somewhere in um, February last year. Mm -hmm. Okay, one point I have. If you look at section 35, it, I, I read from a document. Eh, well, I'm, I'm at a great disadvantage because eh? I yeah. don't have yeah. the code. Uh, call call the code. Call, 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 I, I, would, I would just request okay, that okay. you speed it up a bit so that we can take okay, some other callers and at, also we have a okay, break. If you look at, well, in a nutshell, I think the, the, the new labor code in some way was, um, what was presented was a sort of a, a water based or low base kind of version can, because. It moves in certain worlds like um, that, say, um, for example, in terms of the principal act that the employee who has worked a couple of months or less six months or more shall be eligible to, for paid leave. The section was amendment, taking out shall and replacing it with me, and if the economy is, is feasible to do so. And some other things, in, in fact, what really bothers me too is section 358 that makes reference to. Um, representation where that the, where in that um area that the children has to show a substantial amount of workers in that particular area could join a union now it makes it majority so if you have 15 people you must show that you got it you you got and 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 that the minister i think there would be the one if i check it i have to uh, see this but i i think that is just bringing us back to a time where we have to call in uh, the Monroe and all the people in 1930 that came into Central Asia to help us all. But we as a people should be able to manage ourselves and not take advantage like that. I mean, business run things, but I believe we should have a, a little more uh, loving heart <laughs> in, 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 in this thing. Okay. That's my point there, Clinton. See you next week Sunday at 12. Uh, next week Sunday. Oh, yes, yes, Ele yes. Election uh, time. Very, very good. I have what, to give that reminder. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I have to give that reminder. Thank you very much, yeah. um, caller. Well, we're due for a break right now, so we'll take our final break. 
When we come back, we'll take some of your calls and we'll just wrap up with Mr. Bran Weezy, Executive Director of the St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce, Industry and Agriculture. Please stay tuned.